Prime Time Glick with Jiminy's special guest, Brendan Fraser. First of all, would you like any of these? Sure. There you go. And Ice Cube. I'm here to tell you, if Suge Knight hung me out a window, I'd remember. If Next Suge person. Knight hung you out of a window, both of y'all would fall out. <laughs> I'm Adrian Van Voorhees, and am I the only one who needs a Glick Fix? No, yeah. Damn straight. Ladies and gentlemen, give me Glick You're wonderful. Oh, that is. I love when you're prompted to cheer that way by signs. It makes it all feel so fresh and of the moment. Every time I do this show, I introduce this fella, and I'm, I'm always thrilled. I'm always amazed that we even made the deal. <laughs> because it was so low, I, I can't believe he took it. But obviously, he was, he was desperate. Please welcome the wonderful Adrian Van Voorhees and the Adrian Van Voorhees. It seems that every day I read, I read in Liz Smith's column today, and, it's, and after all these things, not knowing about you, mm -hmm. that you are still a practicing midwife. I didn't know yes, this. Yes, yes, that is true. <laughs> I learned a long time ago at my grandmother's knee, or thereabouts. <laughs> and, um, of course, I've been very, very busy with the whole show business thing, but I like to keep my hand in. <laughs> Good for you. Isn't that wonderful? And where's our Miss Gathercole? She's never missed a show, Adrian. No, not a one. <laughs> How are you today, dear? Mired in misery, thanks to these bloody bosom implants. <laughs> Why would a woman in her early 90s suddenly feel the need to go so blatantly showgirl? It was a failed attempt to woo back my ex-lover, Rory. He liked them big. And I aim to please. Oh, old lady, if I were you, I would keep that cigarette away from those hydrogen hooters, or it'll be the Hindenburg all over again. You're just jealous because Rory only wanted to feast at my snack table and not from you. It'll take more than those beach balls to bring that boy back. Once he found his contact lenses chimney, he was gone. Oh, Rory you. left my bed because he was afraid your family would stop by and try to sell him crack cocaine. Racist whore. Fornicate. You make me cut you. We had metal detectors to screen for weapons. Apparently not. Anyways, yeah. that's what I wanted to talk Don't about. Don't touch my rack. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I've got a TV special that will be airing on the Oxygen Network this Sunday night. It's Jiminy Glick's Spittin' Distance USO Tour, where we entertained our boys and gals in uniform. Here, here to us. How very patriotic. However, we didn't fly to the Middle East or anything. We just toured the bases in the local area because jet lag tends to constipate me, and I'm so not good when I'm blocked. Tell me about it. <laughs> now, if memory serves me, Ramon, I believe we have a clip. Where do I look? So the wonderful mini-me said of a blind prostitute, you have to hand it to her. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the great Liza Minnelli. Fine, Liza, this evening. Well, I, well, Jimmy, thank you so much for asking. I have to say I feel fabulous. I mean, I'm so happily married, and, uh, well, life couldn't be better, and I'm sporting two new hips, and I'm ready to go. <laughs> well, maybe ask you something. Yes, baby, anything you ask me, anything. <laughs> The Rat Pack, that must have been fun touring. You always remember that last tour Liza did with Sammy and Frank. Yeah, you know, it, it, those guys were so fabulous. And the thing about Uncle Frank and, and, and Uncle Sammy is, is you feel like I'm spending time with family. And that's really what they were, was family. One of them was black, but it didn't matter. But you've always cared about America. Even your mother, the wonderful... 
Judy Garland. Judy Garland. Yes. Well, was always singing songs about America, wasn't she, Liza? Yes, well, Mama was, uh, was very patriotic, and I... And what about the fact that she drank so much and took so many pills? Well, you know, Hollywood is really about staying on top of things. And when you can't, you drink and you do pills. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Yes. But you see, political humor is always a risk. You never know whose feathers you're going to ruffle. Don't you agree, Miss Gathercole? Stop your soul food shenanigans, you knife feeling sow. Skank, you better let go of my blade. Stay away from my wrath. <laughs> Go to commercial so the cleaning staff can do their thing. And Adrian, why don't you do your thing disco style? Coming up, Brendan Fraser after this. This week on Sex in the Saudis. <laughs> I tell you who warms my tent. Oh, Ben Stein. <laughs> if Ahmad knew I was wearing fuck me pumps underneath these robes, he would be head me. Sex in the Saudis on Primetime Glick. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. That sounds like a porno film starring Shannon Tweed or something. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, Fasten your G-spots, because here comes the mummy's worst enemy, Brendan Fraser. Hey, buddy. Hey, how you doing? How are you, Brendan? It's Brendan Fraser. Hold on. Then sit down, won't you, Brendan Fraser? You sit right there, boy. You sit right there. And hug. Now that... What? First of all, would you like any of these? Sure. There you go. Oh. Yeah, you let me ask you something. You do this. You do this. I love, I love, I love seeing a Brendan Fraser movie. Because. Oh, let me have a. Oh. Missed. How could I have missed? So, oh, Brendan Fraser movie. Okay, now let me ask you this. Your first, your first film was Encino Man. Yes. Oh, I love that. You played Link. I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you played a Jew. You played a Jewish man. Yes, I did. And that was risky to play a Jew in Hollywood. <laughs> in the 90s. What went through your head taking that kind of risk? Well, I made sure that it was a film that had meaning. But that. why a Jew? <laughs> well, it, the, the, the character was actually just a kid. He was a football player, and he just wanted to belong. And he was willing to do anything to, to be a part of a group, even to uh, deny who he was fundamentally as a person. That's wrong. That's wrong. You should embrace, you should embrace whoever you are. Well, that was the point if of... If you're a Buddhist, be happy you're a Buddhist. If you're a Muslim, be happy that you're a Muslim. If you're Episcopalian, hide that fact. <laughs> You were raised in Holland, Switzerland, and Canada. Yes. Isn't that a strange thing to have said about you? I was born in the United States, oh. and my parents are Canadian. Yes. So it feels kind of like I was raised by Canadians. Like, but you were there. Like Tarzan. <laughs> well, <laughs> How complicated is this? It's like saying, I, you know, I was born in Germany, and my parents were British, and I feel like, I don't know, sometimes I was raised by British people. I mean, isn't there... <laughs> I take your point, Jiminy. Yeah, I mean, you, you'd tell me if you'd had a major construction accident on the way to this taping, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure you would. I'm sure you would. I'm sure you would. I'm sure you would. So your childhood was tragic moving around, no, right? No, it wasn't tragic. It seems tragic to me. <laughs> when you were in Holland, did you wear wooden shoes? And if you did, what size? And if you did, all those two things, what color? <laughs> My, my shoes were red. Why, 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 why would you wear red wooden shoes? 
Well, because Jiminy, it was Holland, and Dutch people wear red shoes. <laughs> just because Hollywood pays you millions of dollars to make your movies does not mean that I just sit here and listen to such garbage. <laughs> I don't care about Holland, and I don't care about your shoes. I have 14 other questions, none of which interest me, but I've got to ask them. <laughs> Thank you very much. I don't ask much. 1998, People Magazine. 50 top most beautiful people in the world. Isn't that an honor? Isn't that an honor? Don't you feel honored by that? I, I appreciate the recognition. Oh, the recognition. I'm telling you, I, was, I made the cover of Farm Animal. most likely celebrities to pull a plow one day. That's not the same thing. I'd much rather have the beautiful thing. You made gods and monsters ball. Was Billy Bob Thornton fun? <laughs> no, the film was gods and monsters. I worked Ew. with Sir Ian McKellen and Oh, Lynn no. Redgrave. Yes. He, and, and then Redgrave. That's right. And Is she the one who showed her wanted to nurse on the set of a sitcom and caused a lot of... People were upset because she wanted to rip out her boobies and nurse. <laughs> and she sued CBS and won, thank God, because they're pigs. <laughs> what scares a Brendan Fraser? What scares a Brendan Fraser? What did I just say? <laughs> Um, well, not a lot, um, actually. I, I, I just, um, my son was born on September 7th. Wonderful! His son was born! Why aren't you plotting? <laughs> That's good news. And, uh, and I, I kind of feel rewired and more comfortable. Well, it That's... certainly energized you. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to say this, that you are one of the great leading men, smart, funny, comedian-type persons. And you come up you come out here as one of the nice people and you feel the love and the wave and oh we're out of time good Brandon Fraser ladies and gentlemen Jiminy will be right back with Ice Cube is it raining? Larry David in his first dramatic role that's it's, it's a whole to do to phone them well you can't blame them then if they thought you were cheating undo it call them up what? So, so, I'm supposed to phone everyone that I ever play cards and say, I'm not cheating, well, even though I'm not cheating? It's a big issue to you. You can't ever lose. It's not an issue up. to me. It's, it's an issue to them. Every time you lose, it's an issue. This Donald runs. Hey! Donnie, how are you? It's, it's Kenny Boy. Starring is Enron CEO Kenneth Lay. So, you're good? Mr. Lay, I don't have a lot of time. So, I... Completely, he completely brushed me. I think so. people want away. They just don't. They don't want to be near you now. You know. They don't want to be associated. Curb your capitalism this season on Primetime Glick. Now we go out and about with Jiminy Glick. I am so excited about my guest today because he is an icon and he is a legend. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Vanilla Ice. Thank you for being here. How wonderful to see you. Ice Cube, man. That's me, Ice Cube. But you went by Vanilla Ice, and then that changed. Here's the first question out of the gate, boy. Why change the name? I never changed my name. What are you talking about? It's in the notes. These notes rarely lies. Often they do, but rarely. Suge Knight hung you out the window, and you got so scared that you said, I don't want to be Vanilla Ice anymore. I want to be Ice Cube. That's what I was told. That's a damn lie, James. Never, ever have I changed my name or Suge Knight hung me out of a window. If Suge Knight hung me out a window, I'd remember. If Next Suge question. Knight hung you out of a window, both of y'all would fall out the damn window. <laughs> Can we start the interview, Let's man? Let's start the interview. Thank you. You changed your name, though, from Vanilla Ice. How come? Never changed my name. My name has always been Ice Cube nice. since I was 12 years old. What about O'Shea Jackson? O'Shea is the name my mama gave me. <laughs> Cock in the ear. There's a wonderful... Robbie Burns once said, the poet, Oh, the tangled web we weave. When first we practice to deceive. Who? Robbie Burns, a Scottish poet. Of. A Scottish pimp. Poet. 
Oh, I thought you meant a Scottish pimp. Poet, a okay. Scottish I'm pimp. I'm a poet too, a Scottish pimp, okay? L.A. pimp, Ice Cube. And then you became a technician. No, I became a rapper with the group N.W.A. And that was successful? Yep, and it meant niggas with attitudes. Oh my goodness gracious. The word attitude is a word we don't use anymore. Yeah, but attitude is what people need. Some people need a little attitude in their life, you know, and it gets them going. And you did a song called Straight Outta Compton. Straight Outta Compton, That's yeah. wonderful. Where's Compton? It's, it's right here in Los Angeles, a little south of where we are, a lot south of where oh, we are. Oh, yeah. no, I don't, I don't, I've never been I there. I know, I know. I've never I been know. there. Trust me, I know. And I don't really plan to go there right soon. I don't think you ever gonna go there. No, 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 I wouldn't. I love Rex Harrison. He was one of the first rappers, because he was, am I a woman? Different than a girl. And he did that in the wonderful My Fair Lady. I'd love to get your copy. And who? Rex Harrison. You don't know who Rex Harrison is? No. Oh my goodness. I'm sending you a series of books over on people. People that you should know about. Do you know Big Sam? Big Sam. Big I have. From my neighborhood. I these, had... are, these are people you should know. Big Sam. Do you know T-Bone? I've eaten a T-Bone several times. I had one for lunch, smothered it in bacon. <laughs> I loved it. Well, you eat all, my friend. I got a friend named Hot Dog and a friend named Donut. Do you know any of them? Why would I want to know any of them? They've got, they're it's not like mental people. But these are people I know, people I grew up with. Why should I know the people that you want me to know and you don't want to know the people that I know? It's an interesting question you've laid on me, Vanilla. My instinct tells me that a lot of the people that you're referring to, I would pretend to like, but in the car ride home, privately, when I was doing notes to myself, I'd have to admit that I didn't like them. But I do think in reverse, if you met Robbie Burns or Rex Harrison, I think you'd say, you know what? They're fun. <laughs> All right. Now, in Three Kings, yeah. Marky Mark was in that, but he doesn't want to be called Marky Mark. No, don't call him Marky Mark. He has a third nipple. Did you know that? <laughs> How many you got, man? This is a true story. We had a litter of puppies. <laughs> and the mother died. Or, okay. or ran off or committed suicide or was depressed. And the, and the puppies literally nursed on my nipples for fire. And I kept those dogs alive until I took them to the pond and had them destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you something. I... Cube. What, how, what do I call you? Can I call you something? Call me Cube, man. Cube, man. Cube, man. No, you, what? Just Cube. Just Cube. What is the ice obsession about? Because it describes my personality. Because you're cooed. Or because when heated, you melt. <laughs> <laughs> Which What you here? think? You don't seem cold at all. You seem warm and loving. And you seem kind and gentle. Hold on, man. You do. Hold up. You seem, Hold up. You seem... Pump your brakes. <laughs> Pump your brakes. No kind, no gentle, no warm. I excuse my name. It describes my personality. That's it, man. I went into the room, and you had a leotard on. You had said, can you do this kind of stretch? And your leg was high up, and you had a thing on Nureyev on TV. Is that the kind of image you're trying to hide from people? What kind of image are you trying to hide from people? Because I hear your voice go up real high, then go down. I can, do, I can do a lot of things, but I tell you, I can't do a plie like I saw you doing in that room. <sighs> this has been absolutely so much fun, Ice Cube. And I want to end this interview with a little rap song that I made about you. Oh, God. He's got a beard. Some say he's weird, but he's my kind of fella, and that's true. And every time he walks down the street, he says, uh, I wish I could eat some beef steak. I haven't worked out the ending. I haven't worked out the end. I'd hope you'd help me with that. I'm going to end this interview. You know, I'm going to fire somebody. What have I done? You've what been have I done? me on every chance you can get, man. Someone tell me why vanilla cream pie is storming off this set when I've done nothing. Interview over, man. Done deal. Oh, my God. Someone phone a replacement. Because, oh, uh, gosh. Well, Vanilla Ice is his own worst enemy. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Coming soon, Jiminy Sits with Steven Spielberg. And you've made so many films. When are you going to do the big one? Uh, uh, what do you mean, big one? Something that clicks with the public. Something that clicks with the public. Yeah.
he says. Laura Flynn Boyle is so skinny that if she had an ulcer, she'd have to carry it like this. Because <laughs> she'd be so thin. Oh, Milosevic makes such wonderful observation humor. Yeah, it's hot in here. Oh, yeah, it's warm. Mind if I take this thing off? Oh, not at all. What the heck? We're just guys. <laughs> That's strange. Huh? Oh, no, actually a lot of guys have three. No, 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 I'm talking about the Brazier. You want me to release the hostages? It's gonna cost you double. <laughs> well, I certainly have money. And I was left money. <laughs> you Let, me hand get Jiminy. Let me get these out. Good oh, little, lord. So the... ah! Oh, sorry. Jiminy. I'll just cut my back. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> 